Welcome to the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teaching you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. Now, if you want to know about the earth lease, we're not going to take time to read it, but Jesus gives it in detail in, in Mark 12. He said, man planted a vineyard, hedged it about, built a tower, let it out to a husbandman. That means leased it out. And as you read it, you know he is describing the earth lease. Now, evidently that lease runs for 6,000 years. Now, we don't know whether our calendar is right or not. Some people say it's already expired, but I doubt it because I, I see in the Word of God where there's going to be some major changes when the earth lease expires, and there's going to be some Ananias and Sapphira incidents again that will make that one in the book of Acts look like a Sunday school picnic when the earth lease expires. There's coming a time when people dare not come against the work of God lest there be judgment from God Himself swiftly upon this planet. But here's what we see. They expected there's a time, there's a time coming when they'll be incarcerated. Now, go over to Luke's Gospel. Now, the reason I'm going through this is that you, you will not have great faith until you understand authority and where that authority comes from. See, there's so many people that think, well, we're just poor little worms in the dust. Just whatever it is to be will be, and whether it ever happens or not, you know. No. God didn't put us here to just kind of drift along. He gave mankind dominion and authority over this planet. And if we don't exercise our authority, then somebody else is going to exercise it. And, and the devil would like to do it. And you know, have you ever considered where the devil gets his power today? He gets it from wicked people. Demons and evil spirits can't start a war unless they can get in somebody. Why they want to get in somebody? Because you have to have a body to have authority on this planet. That's why Jesus had to be born here. He had to have a physical flesh, blood, and bone body. Any spirit being in this planet that does not have a physical flesh, blood, and bone body is severely limited in what they can do unless they can get in somebody. And that's why God wants to inhabit you. That's why the Holy Ghost wants to be inside you. That's why Jesus wants to be inside you, because your body gives Him authority here. And when you understand that He's in you and you in Him, and, and Paul said, uh, God said, I will live in them, I'll walk in them, make my abode in them. If you have the Word of God in you, it makes your spirit fit for God Himself to indwell. But the Word must abide in you. Now notice here in Luke's Gospel, in the uh, 21st, uh, chapter 3, verse 21, Now when all the people were baptized, came past Jesus being baptized and praying, the heavens were open. The Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon Him, and a voice came from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved Son, in Thee I am well pleased. Now notice, Jesus is 30 years old, up to this point, he's never done one single miracle. He has not cast out one demon. Why? Because he had not yet been anointed with the Holy Ghost and healing power. Now, Philippians says he stripped himself of his divine power, or his, not his divine, his, his glory and power. When he came to the earth, he came here as a man. He never did a single miracle till after he was baptized in the river Jordan. The Holy Ghost descended upon him. Why? Because he couldn't. Because he had not yet been anointed. Now, if he was acting as God here on earth, then why would God have to anoint him? Now, this gives you some insight. But after the Holy Ghost descended upon him, Jesus stood up in the synagogue, and he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me. Now, where would you go to get a higher anointing than God? There is none. So, he tells you why he did the miracles and healed the sick 
and all the things that he did because God anointed him. Peter said it in Acts. He said, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost power went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. That's good news, isn't it? Now, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. See, we're in Luke, the fourth chapter. Now, he's been baptized in the River Jordan. Holy Ghost descends upon him. Now, when you come over here to the, to the fourth chapter in verse 14, and it says, Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out of fame throughout all the region round about. He taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. Now, after he was anointed with the Holy Ghost and healing power, his fame went out to all the region round about. But up until he was 30 years of age, until he was anointed with the Holy Ghost, he did not one single miracle, never cast out one demon, never raised any dead. Why? Because he couldn't. He was operating as a man. Now don't misunderstand me. He's son of God, all right. He has a physical flesh, blood, and bone body. He walks like a man. He talks like a man. He acts like a man because he was a man. But yet he was the son of God. God was his father. But he had an earthly mother. Now you'll notice that after he preached this sermon here, the first sermon he preached in his own hometown, you'd have thought they'd said, Amen, Brother Jesus, we're going to vote you in as pastor. <laughs> but they didn't. They got mad enough to kill him. Who does he think he is? Well, it's obvious who he thought he was because he went over and sat down in the seat reserved for the Messiah. <laughs> they said that's why they really got so irate about it because he, he sat down in a chair that was reserved for the Messiah. It was obvious who he believed he was or knew he was. So he went through, they were going to cast him down the hill headlong and kill him, and he went through the midst of them. Now look at verse 33. And in the synagogue, uh, uh, he went over to... Uh, Verse 31, he came over to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and taught them on the Sabbath days. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. And in the synagogue there was a man which had a spirit of unclean devil, cried out with a loud voice, saying, Let us alone, what have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. Now, what in the world would make a demon want to witness for Jesus? The devil never tells the truth unless he thinks it to his advantage to do so. He said, I know who you are. You're the Holy One of God. You'd have thought he'd have said, this man's a false prophet. Don't believe him. No, because he was confused. He thought Jesus was operating as God. Therefore, it was illegal for Jesus to cast the demon out of this man because it was not legal for God to do it. He'd given the authority of the earth to man. He didn't understand that Jesus was a man anointed with the Holy Ghost and healing power. And Jesus rebuked them and said, Hold thy peace. In other words, shut your mouth and come out of him. And sure enough, he did. <laughs> Verse 36, And they were amazed and spake among themselves, What a word is this, that with authority and power he commanded the unclean spirits, and they, came, they come out. And his fame went out through all the regions round about. Now he went over to, to uh, Simon Peter's uh, wife's mother, his mother-in-law's house, and she was sick with a fever. And uh, he stood over her, rebuked the fever, it left her, and immediately she arose and ministered to them. Now somebody said that's the reason Peter denied Jesus, because he healed his mother-in-law. But <laughs> not, probably not. <laughs> and then when the sun was setting, <laughs> a little humor there, somebody said very little. Now when the sun was setting, all they that were of divers diseases brought them unto him. He laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. And uh, it says, the devils came out of many, crying out, saying, Thou art the Christ, the Son of God. And he rebuked them, suffered them not to speak, for they knew he was the Christ. Now why would they want to witness for Jesus? They're challenging his authority. They're saying, we know who you are. You're the Holy One of God. And, and God gave the authority of this earth to man. And you're God and not a man. And you can't do this. But he did. See, that's why I say you have to have a, you understand authority if you're going to have great faith. Because your body gives you authority on this planet. Now, come with me over to John's Gospel, the fifth chapter. I'm going to prove it to you from the Scriptures. You get a hold of this, you'll never be the same. 
John 5, verse 26, as the Father. Now, Jesus is speaking. John 5, verse 26, as the Father had life in Himself, so hath He given the Son to have life in Himself, and has given Him authority to execute judgment also, justice, the, the, script, uh, the uh, Greek says justice for and against, for us and against the devil, in other words. He has given Him authority to execute just judgment also, or justice also, because He is, what? Son of man. He didn't have the authority because he was a son of God. He was a son of God, but he had authority because he's a son of man. He was born on this planet. He was a legal resident of this planet. See, to be, have authority on this planet, you have to have an earth suit. You go out in space, you've got to have a space suit. On earth, you've got to have an earth suit. You don't see me tonight. You see my body. You see my earth suit. There's a natural body and there's a spiritual body. This physical body is my earth suit. It gives me authority here. You have noticed that when people die, they don't vote anymore, don't you? <laughs> they lose their authority. You have to leave this planet. The spiritual body has to leave this planet. Now, come with me over to John, the 10th chapter. Jesus gives you a revelation insight into authority here. Now, there's several things involved here. We're only going to deal with this part of it. In John 10, chapter 10, verse 1, Jesus speaking, He said, Verily I, verily I say unto you, or truly, truly I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. Now, the sheepfold is the earth. David said, We're the sheep of your pasture. Well, David was on earth, wasn't he? He that climbeth up some other way into the sheepfold, or comes into the earth any other way than coming through the legal entry, See, the, the door to the sheepfold was the legal entry. Anybody that climbed over the wall wasn't up to any good. So the legal entry, Jesus is saying, into this planet, anybody that comes in other than through the legal entry is a thief and a robber. Now, specifically, he's referring to Satan, the devil, demons, and evil spirits. But now look at the next verse. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Now specifically, he's referring to himself as being the great shepherd. Now Jesus is the shepherd here, and he entered through the door. The, le the door represents a legal entry into this planet. Have you noticed when you, if you go to apply for, for a social security number, or, or if you go to apply for a job, they want to see your birth certificate. Well, look like they can look at you until you've been born. But it gives the date, it gives the city, it gives the, the uh, uh, country. It's a legal document that proves you have authority on this planet. Now think with me a minute. He that entered not by the door, but entered into the earth some other way than through the legal entry as a thief and a robber. When Satan showed up in the Garden of Eden, he had been cast out of heaven. He's a created being. He does not have a physical flesh, blood, and bone body. He was not born on this planet. He's an illegal alien to this planet. He does not have authority here. The only authority he has is what he can usurp from somebody. No Christian should ever be afraid of the devil, demons, or evil spirits that knows their authority on this planet. If you don't know anything else to do, the devil comes around your house stirring up trouble and causing trouble, and just get your birth certificate out and read it to him. Now, folks, I'm just serious as I can be. It proves that you have authority on this planet. When you get through reading it to him, say, now let me see yours. He doesn't have one. And when he finds out that you know that you have authority and he doesn't have any, he'll gather up his belongings and go down to somebody else's house that doesn't know that they have authority. Now, folks, we were created in the image of God and His likeness, and He gave man dominion over this planet, mankind dominion over this planet. Your body gives you authority on this planet. That's the reason the devil wants your body sick, crippled, or dead, because it will severely inhibit your, your authority and your ability, especially if you're dead. <laughs> and it will certainly inhibit it if you're sick. That's the reason the devil wants you either sick, crippled, or dead. But folks, you have authority on this planet. Your body gives you authority. Now, if you read a little further here, 
Verse 6, Jesus, this parable spake Jesus unto them, and they understood not what things he were that he spake unto them. Now, this is a double parable. It, it, it's a progressive parable. Now, listen to it. Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. Now, down here, he came, he entered in through the door. The legal entry into this planet is being born here. In his spirit being, that means demons, spirits, the devil himself, was cast out of heaven when he showed up in the Garden of Eden. You read uh, uh, Ezekiel, I think it's 38, and Isaiah 14, and a few other scriptures, and you'll find that he already been cast out of heaven. He ruled over nations, was cast out of heaven when he showed up in the Garden. And he didn't have a physical flesh and blood bone and bone body. He had to bar the body of a serpent to even manifest himself. We have the body. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Now, see, if you take verse 1 and verse 2 of John 10 and superimpose it over verse 10, the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and destroy. Only three reasons Satan came to, to this planet. Steal, kill, and destroy God's creation. Jesus said, I am come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. One translation says that they might have abundant life until it overflows. That will answer all your questions about healing and health and all of this other stuff. I am come that you might have life. Now, see, down here, Jesus entered in by the door. He was born here. Up here, he is the door of the sheep. In other words, he has now become the door into the kingdom of God. You're not going to get into heaven by joining some church. Now, you may, you may get born again in the church and join it, but Jesus is the door to heaven. You've got to be in Christ if you plan on going to heaven. Salvation is in the person of Jesus Christ. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son hath not life. It's just that simple. John put it very simple. So here we have a, a profile revealing that if you're born on this planet, you come through the legal entry of being born here, you have authority here. But the devil, demons, and evil spirits were not born on this planet. They do not have authority here. And I'll tell you, if you don't know anything else to do, the devil comes around, you know, and you don't have time to get your birth certificate out, just holler, green card. <laughs> That'll put him on tranquilizers right there. Because he don't know how much you know about the green card, you know. <laughs> he doesn't have authority here. You have authority on this planet. God gave mankind authority. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl there, over the cattle, over all the earth, over every creeping thing. It's good news just know you have dominion over creeps. <laughs> God gave mankind dominion. And when you understand that, you become a different person. Now, let me show you the ministry of Jesus. Jesus never healed a person or cast out one demon or did one single miracle. Now, all those stories in the, the what is it, the apocalypse? Or, no, I'm using the wrong word, but there's an old writing that they say is part of the Word of God that was re rejected as being the canon that says that Jesus made birds out of clay and they flew and all this when he was a child. That's all fictitious. It didn't happen. It's not part of the Word of God. Somebody made it up. Because Jesus was born on this planet, he was like any other child except the fact that God was his Father. And you see, the bloodline follows the Father. The way you can tell who fathered the child, one of the ways you can tell. Of course, DNA now you can tell uh, surely, but, but if the child does not have the blood type of his father, I mean uh, of who they think is his father, that was not his father. Because the child will have the same blood type as the father, always. Always. Well, God was his father. And the inheritance in the, in the Old Testament, the inheritance fathered followed uh, the Father, you know, in, in the... Uh, so, Jesus was born on this planet. God was his Father, but he had an earthly mother, which made it legal for him to be here and gave him authority. But he had authority for 30 years, never cast out one demon, never healed one single person until God anointed him with Holy Ghost and healing power. Now, can you see the situation that we have today? 
Jesus went to the pool of Bethesda one day. And there's a man there, been there 38 years, and, and, and he said to the man, uh, Will thou be made whole? He didn't ask him if he wanted to be. That would have been a foolish question. He said, Will you? Will you be made whole? Well, he started talking about his problem. I have no man, because when the water is troubled, somebody gets in before I do. Jesus said to the man, Rise, take up your bed, and go home. Now think about this a minute. Here's a man been there 38 years. Never walked a step in all of his life. And some guy comes up, he don't even know who Jesus is. And says, rise, take up your bed and go home. He said it with a, such authority till the man just gathered up his bed and starts home. And the Jews get mad, wrong day to carry a bed. And he said, but the man that healed me told me to carry my bed. And they said, who was he? I see the old boy just set his bed down. Lean up on it. I can see him scratch his head. Said, you know for life of me, I don't know who that fellow was. <laughs> but now think about it. He don't know who he is. But somebody said to him, see, probably been a lot of folks come along there and said, oh, just, just hang in there, brother, just a few more days and it'll all be over. But here's a man walked up and said, Rise, take up your bed and go home. The old boy just gathered up his bed. Now, two things here I want you to see. This man had been taught all his life, you don't carry your bed or do anything on work on the Sabbath day. Religiously been taught that. Now, he's got to make a decision. Am I going to be religious or am I going to get healed? He finally decided he'd rather be healed, just gathered up his bed and start home. And they said, who was the man that healed you? He said, for the life of me, I don't know who that fellow was. He didn't even know Jesus. Didn't know who he was. And we know who he is and what he said. And what he did. By his stripes ye were healed. See, the authority, if you understand authority, this word becomes alive to you. That's why Jesus said, if you abide in me, my words abide in you. Ask what you will, say what you will, declare what you will, based on the authority of the Word. In other words, you're only limited by what you can believe based on the authority of this Word. That's the only thing that limits you, is the authority of this Word. Now watch, Jesus only healed one, there was only one person got healed that day at the pool of Bethesda, and there's a multitude of folks there. Now, you know, they crucified Jesus. He died. The devil thought he buried him, but he didn't. He just planted him, and the third day he came up. That was one of the worst things he ever saw. And on the day of Pentecost, he got a uh, 3,120 fold return. And it had been more ever since. The devil couldn't deal with one Jesus, and now he, he, after the day of Pentecost, he's had 3,120 poured out of the same mold. But now here's what I want you to get a hold of. If you get a hold of this tonight, you'll never be the same. Remember when Jesus uh, was ascended to the Father, and uh, then uh, they watched him as he went up. Then the Apostle Paul said, What I preach, I have, was not taught it of man, but by revelation of Jesus Christ. In other words, he got his revelation, what he is preaching, from Jesus Christ himself. He was caught up into the third heaven. And you remember Paul said, Now you are the body of Christ, and members in particular. After Jesus arose from the dead and was caught up into heaven, he was the body of Christ, wasn't he? He was the light of the world. But he said, Now you are the light of the world. He said, As long as I'm in the world, I'm the light of the world. But he, but he said, then you're the light of the world. Then Paul came along and said, after Jesus is gone, he said, now you're the body of Christ. What's he saying? He said, you have the authority. You have the body. Now Jesus stood on the mountain. Matthew 28 records it. Uh, the same thing is recorded in a little different manner in, uh, in Mark 16. He said, all power is given to me both in heaven and earth. I have it all. Now you go in my name. I used to say, Jesus, if you had all the power, why do you want me to go? I finally got through with me after about 40 years that he has given us an assignment. 
he had all the power and the authority. Then you hook up with that. He said, now you go in my name. He's delegating that authority to the body of Christ. Thank you so much for joining us for the Concepts of Faith broadcast today. Now, before we leave the broadcast, I want to offer an uh, offer this week that I believe be a blessing to you. It's called Authority Series, four audio cassettes in a nice album for $20. It's offer number 2411, 2411, four audio cassettes for the price of $20. Now, in this four cassette series, we talk about how that God gave mankind dominion on this planet. Now, there's some of you that think, well, I'm just a little nobody. I'm just, you know, here in the earth, just a little worm in the dust. No, God created man in his image, in his likeness, and he said, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing. Now, folks, it's good news to just know that you have dominion over creeps today because there's a lot of creeps out there. But now, in this series, we will take you scripturally through the Bible and show you that God intended for you to exercise your dominion on this planet. You do it through words, and faith-filled words will change your world. Now, you, you only get a few verses into Genesis, and you see God calling things that are not as though they were. You have authority to do that because he said, let us make man in our image. He looked out and saw darkness and said, light be. Your body gives you authority on this planet. Now, you need to know that because some of you thought you're just a nobody, but your body gives you authority over the devil, demons, and evil spirits. God's anointing gives you the ability to overcome him, but any spirit being in this planet without a body is very severely limited in what they can do. So your body is important. The human spirit works through you, and God works through you in the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Well, that's offer number 2411, four audio cassettes for $20. We have a toll-free order line. That's 1-877-396-9400. 1-877-396-9400. Four, four audio cassettes for $20. I believe they'll be a blessing to you. It'll help you understand why the devil wants your body sick, crippled, or dead because it'll severely inhibit your authority. Learn how to exercise your authority and take dominion over the curses of the law that has come because of Satan. Until next time, this is Charles Kemp's reminding you that the devil is defeated, God is exalted, and yes, Jesus is coming soon. To order a copy of today's show or any product offered on this program, call 1-877-396-9400 or visit our website at caps.tv where you can order downloads of our MP3 teachings, eBooks, and watch other programs on demand. This broadcast has been sponsored by Caps Ministries and is dedicated to helping you put the Word of God to work in the everyday circumstances of your life.